welcome to this episode of The Faux Show. Today is Sunday, August 24th. My name is Angela. And my name is Chris. And as most of you know, The Faux Show is not a real show. It is a social experience because I don't look at you. I look at the chat room which I have here on my iPad. Oh, the chat room? I have equipped that on my screen. Full screen on that screen. It's over there on a monitor where we can see ourselves uh, and over here too. Yeah, it doesn't matter, Angela, because it's built if, just right there into the screen, which we call the lower third. Over at JBLive.TV, we've embedded an IRC chat room. You go in that IRC chat room or with your favorite IRC client. It's magic. You go in that lower third, you are now participating in our show. Also, the internet's first chat room lower third. It was. Mm-hmm. Hey, just give it a little pet right there. Ooh, that's Pioneer. nice. Hi, um, lower third. You know, you see how I 3D printed these uh, uh, these lower thirds here? This this whole blue bar, I did that with my 3D printer. Uh, this red part actually took me a couple of days to print that right there. Uh, so what are we talking about today, Ange? <laughs> 3D printing. What? Yeah. Um, I have a couple articles. Uh, just like, this is such a huge topic, but yeah. we're just barely going to cover... We could do like several shows on this in the future, even. Easily, yeah. easily. So um, I think the first thing that is kind of the most exciting thing that I have seen so far okay, has to do with space. Oh, the do, final frontier. Do you have one having to do with I space? Have, I have, no, I do not have a oh, 3D printing oh, story. Oh. You got me. Wow. You, okay, all right. Wow. I got a couple that she doesn't know about. Check but, this out. All right, what do you got, Andrews? The future of space exploration will change forever when everything we need for space is built in, in space. space. So yeah, you just got to set up the printer and the raw materials. Yep. In the future, parts, habitats, and structures are not launched and assembled, but instead 3D printed layer by layer in outer space with additive manufacturing. So what's cool is that it takes out a lot of a lot of things that we currently have to do. We have to build things to survive launching. Well, and you have to, you know, if you're going to if you're going to take something up that's a certain size, then the vessel carrying it must be at least that size and larger. Right. But this eliminates the need to uh, to have it right launchable right it just is already there right and can start printing and yeah it could be as big as possible but also check this out oh, okay like if they want to um, repair something yeah they just send the instructions oh. for that exact part, part. yeah I like not, that. Not go up there like, do we have the right part well, or even not? If, even if astronauts had to install it later, the part right. could be up there waiting for them, yes. which is cool. Here's what I was thinking is the other, the other weight savings you would get is potentially in fuel because I don't know how you would power it. But if you got if you got something up there, maybe it could be maybe the printer could be solar powered, so you wouldn't have to transport Ooh, up the energy either. Right. That would save a ton of weight. So take a take a look at this picture. Um, let's see. Uh, Avalis makes a very good point. Kind of need gravity for additive printing. Hmm. Okay. What about if they I'm could do it with, with, with air propulsion? Well, I'm pretty sure that like they have thought of that already. And see, well, yeah. I believe this is their prototype. So it's actually well, in. Of course, if they're talking about doing this, they've thought of that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I know. That's, right. Yeah. But it is like, what, how have they solved that problem? That's a good question. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, but yeah, so like <clears throat> you need to launch a new satellite into space? No, just make it. Yeah, just print it and just have it take off from up there. Yep. Amazing. I wonder I wonder how realistically far away that is. I 20 know. years, 30 years? I don't know. I mean, it's getting better every time. Yeah. Or, or you know, like every, every year. Do you want one of mine? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. So uh, this is a little more down to earth, if you will, <laughs> Ange. Uh, this is happening right now in China, and this is just a raw video of it. Aww. What, what, what? Yep, that's the one I was looking at last night. <laughs> you, you saw this already? Yes, I did. Actually, I have a better video. No, I, I have it's a, the same video. I have, a, I have another video, too. These are houses that are being printed, actually entire buildings, that are being 3D printed in China it. right now. Oh, you want me to mute it? All right, fine. I like the little ambiance. It's like that's the... Oh. All right. I think it's really neat. I mean, you can see it in the walls, right? Yeah. You can see that it's 3D printed. But, but this still. entire building, this entire yeah. building was 3D printed. And yep. then they bring it out and they assemble it and it's ready to go. Yep. And it's like $5,000. Pretty cheap. Yeah. Uh, you can see how uh, people that are building out, you know, a nation that's sort of, sort of up and coming. Here's a little bit of the, uh, little bit of the manufacturing process right there. Was that uh, yours? Yes, sorry. Oh, look at that. So you see what it's doing is it's using concrete yep. for the 3D printing process. Well, and um, it's concrete and uh, recycled yeah. materials. Ma a mixture of sand, concrete, glass fiber, materials processed from common construction waste, which yep. is then pumped into a layer through the top 6.6 .6 meter tall, 32 meter long industrial printer. 
Yeah, which would be fine with me. I wonder though how warm it is, like, or if you have to af- well, have to add any insulation, or you know, it, it doesn't look any funkier if you think about it than like a log cabin would have way back when you know building homes was sort of something that you did on your own. Sure. My next one's kind of related to the same thing. Oh, okay. Do you have one? That's, do you have another one in the same vein? Should I uh, just no? Go ahead. All right. All right. So since they're related, I'll just get rid of mine. Here is one that's actually so that was China that we just played. Here's one that's uh, t- happening in the this U.S. Claim to have developed a revolutionary new giant 3D concrete printer that can build a 2,500 square foot house in just 24 hours. Wow. Hours, yeah. printer developed by Professor Baruch Hoshnevis from the University it of still Southern uses California wood, though. could be used to That's build a whole house, layer by layer, in a single day. The giant robot replaces construction workers with a nozzle on a gantry, which squirts out concrete and can quickly build a home based on a computer pattern. It's Google actually kind of cool looking MSN house. Yeah. Supported. It is. Basically, scaling up 3D printing to the scale of building, said Kosh Nevers. Contour crafting is a layered fabrication technology and has great potential for automating the construction of whole structures as well as subcomponents, according to the project website. What Using the heck? this process, yeah, you a could. single house or a colony of houses, each with possibly a different design, <laughs> may be automatically constructed in a single run. So think about like you bring in this giant equipment mm-hmm. and it just sits down and it starts printing a house and then it picks up and it moves over to the next housing lot. unit lot, mm-hmm. sits down and prints another house and it could just vary, it could have like five or six different patterns that it's printing. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. And... I wonder. That's really crazy. And and like you can see why it's going to happen fast because mm-hmm. why wouldn't they want to jump on that, mm-hmm. right? If they can make it actually happen. Yeah. <sighs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right, Andrew. What well, you got next? So the next one I have is, um, you know, there's a ton of products out there that are being made the hard way mm. that could be that could be made with a 3D printer. Sure. And one of them that was really surprising to me is eyeballs. What? Yeah. What? What do you mean eyeballs? 3D printing technology rebuilds the human body, the bioprint eyeball and skull. So, um, yeah, they are using 3D printers now to make fake eyes. Wow. And that just makes sense. But they're also like, um, they printed an artificial ear and they've done- Oh, shoot. I was just going to tell you that. You already knew because I've got- Yeah. So they- um, they, The ear was bred in a 3D mold of live cells- it's just so weird. Do you want to see it? There's a little. Uh, there's a little video here sure. on it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. It's it's kind of it's kind of crazy. We talked about it on Sidebite a while back. This video might be it. So that's scientists the scientists have created a human ear using a three-dimensional printer. They made the ear using living cow ear cells and collagen that were injected into an ear-shaped mold. The scientists then grew the ear-shaped Isn't mold on the back of a rat for one to three months. On the back wow. of a rat. Ear replacements are used for patients who have lost their ears to cancer or an accident, or were born with deformed ears. The experimental 3D printed ears have yet to be tested on humans, but if they are successful, human implants could be possible in about three years. This project is not the first time that scientists have grown a human ear on a mouse. Wow. In 1997, scientists implanted cow cells and a biodegradable mesh in the shape of a toddler's ear onto the back of a hairless mouse. In 1999, an anti-genetics group put a full-page picture of the mouse as an ad in the New York Times claiming that the mouse was genetically engineered. But in fact, no human cells were huh. used and the yeah. mouse was not genetically modified at all. So, uh, you huh. could so you could see how printing body parts? I know. That could be amazing. I know. Like um I I have read about skin grafting mm-hmm. where they're um using it to print skin, which is just Crazy. I mean, just the possibilities for for people is just mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine that we'll see more um, like hip replacements with three sure. D printed bones hips and stuff. Because yeah, yeah. I've always wondered, like, with hip replacement, are they putting like some sort of just generic hip in there, or are they trying to make it look like the other hip of that person's mm-hmm. body? Mm-hmm. Are they basing it off of an X ray? You know, of I think the other so. One, or... I think that's how they. I think they shave it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's it's just really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want one, Ange. I know you, you you think the home ones are are not so serious yet, but I want one. I think printing like kids' toys and things like that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, guess who's in on this? Amazon. Smart. They have a 3D printing store. Of course. Yeah. 
And um, you can just, uh, you can get jewelry and... So this um, is stuff people have made? Wallets and I don't know if it's stuff people have made. I think it's stuff that... Amazon makes. Browse a variety of 3D printed products, including ju- uh, jewelry. Well, click on one of them and see who them. sells it. Tech accessories. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Yeah. three. Of course, phone cases, right? Yeah. Easy. Easy peasy. All right. So click 3D on- 3D printed diamonds, iPhone. Yeah. I. So that looks like a company that makes 3D products. Yeah. yeah. Did you see also, go back one. Uh, did you see that scuba um, mask right there? It's down. It's in red. It's in the bottom right. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. Isn't that a good example of something that, like, maybe one company wouldn't want to go make that, like, a whole bunch of those? But if you're going right. to 3D print, right. you could just manufacture those on demand. Like, somebody orders it, maybe you couldn't do it that close, but you could do it really close. I mean, think about inventory, right? Mm-hmm. When inventory gets low, you just print a few more. And that, that's incredible. Yeah. This is really awesome. I really like the, the phone cases. <laughs> yeah. They are pretty neat. Oh, I like the... Uh, iPhone 5 stand. Yeah, I like the stands. That's, yep. a, that's a great idea. And so you could probably do that with a home 3D printer. Yeah. Although, yeah. Of course, okay. So sure Bronwyn asks are. in the chat room, says mm-hmm. Bronwyn, Bronwyn says, why would you buy 3D printed stuff? I mean, isn't that the reason for having a 3D printer in the first place? Why? You think about that. Like, think, how many businesses are going to be put out by, by the fact that people can have essentially a replicator at home? This is, we're getting close to the Star Trek replicator, right? Where you go up to the computer and say, computer, I want a cup for teal. For, for, for tea, but not an actual. They won't give you the tea, but it'll at least print you the cup. So pretty soon you won't need to go buy plates. You won't need to go buy yeah. cups because you'll be able to just print your own plates in your own cups. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know. Let me try to think of a, an example. Hmm. Of course, couldn't you say the same thing about a pie? Like, everybody could make Anything. their own yeah, pie. exactly. Okay, that's what I was, I was like, you know, stairs. I don't know why I was thinking of stairs. <laughs> stairs. But, <laughs> but, yeah, no, Um. sometimes... I don't know. I don't know how cheap this would be. I don't right. know how much 3D it's printers cheap, are. It's cheap, but I think sometimes just like saving the effort or having somebody who's an expert, a craftsman, and making right. that thing be the person that makes it. Maybe they have a better technique. Maybe they have a more industrial grade printer or better whatever. Better materials. Yeah, better. Better yeah. price. More, yeah, more expensive materials or whatever it could be where if you couldn't get access to them. I could always see where there'd be a place, but I think definitely at the lower end of the market, there's going to be people like, maybe we'll finally see all those damn dollar stores go out of business. Huh? Yeah, maybe. But so the thing about three D printers is that they um they they take up a lot of space. Uh, so they does do. a toaster oven. Well no no no. They take up the they literally yeah. have to be bigger in order to make something. Yeah, they have bigger. to be the size of the thing they're gonna make so, at least. Yeah. And larger. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it I don't know. I think they're probably gonna figure out how to make them smaller and more compact like they did with the computer <laughs> or hard drives. Yeah. But yeah. but not as much because they still really do need to, you know. But that I mean, not to I mean, you could be totally right, but that also sounds like the same argument somebody would have made against the fridge before people had fridges. You can't have something that large in your kitchen. Right? Hmm. That's ridiculous. That's too big. Yeah, I guess. I mean, maybe uh, the American dream would be to have, you know, your 3D printing room. Yeah, well, <laughs> or like the closet. Like instead of like a coat closet, it's the 3D printing closet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my 3D printer's in the closet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. All right, all right, you got any other links there, Andrews? No. Whoa. I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was really we blew, quick. Blew through that. Well, I, I, didn't, I thought there would be a lot of discussion. And well, and it also didn't help. Up. I picked, well, we did have some good discussion. What are you talking about? Yeah. I, I think when I look forward as a parent right now, I look at all the toys we have around our house. I can't wait. And I think this is where our kids are going to be super lucky. I think our kids will be parents of the generation where they print their own kids' toys on demand. Like Dylan right now comes to us and he's like, Dad, Dad, I really want this toy. Dad, this this is so awesome. I saw it on YouTube. I just have to have it. It was just ridiculous because now everybody on YouTube has got a toy. Of course, other kids find it. And he comes to you and it's like, okay, well, that's $15. But if I could just be like, all right, Dylan, well, I'll have it printed in a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. Game changer. Plus, get ready for this one, Andrews. You got to like this. Kids could maybe design their own toys. Build a bear, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bronwyn says uh, that she can understand... Uh, getting the big stuff that you'd maybe want to buy in the store but for little replacement part stuff you could do that at home right so the thing is you'd have to have like the software and you'd have to understand how it works and you'd have to have all the schematics i'll give you an example though of something that you can do right now uh parts and interiors of trucks like my truck sunglass holder oh uh, yeah it it just got so hot out and it's an older truck and so the plastic broke it just snapped one day and so now my sunglasses holder is just 
dangling, <laughs> right? It's just dangling. <laughs> well, you can go online and you can actually get people have made 3D printer specs of those a- mm-hmm. areas of your dash, mm-hmm. and you can print yourself out a replacement part yeah. for your vehicle, and nobody's making those parts anymore. Right. That's really cool. Or right. like yep. an old, old, old car, you could maybe print out like an internal engine component mm-hmm. that nobody makes that particular widget anymore. Right. So it's kind of like having a replicator. Right. One, well, you know, like we saw, they're doing the 3D printing with, uh, you know, live cells, but they're mm-hmm. also doing metal. They're mm-hmm. doing plastic. They're Can I doing- get dirty for a second? I I foresee an entire industry, maybe it's already in existence, but I don't know, uh, where porn stars could mm. sell like recreations of their parts to oh people online gosh. through like a parts store. And then you could have so-and-so's hoo-ha or Mr.'s ding-a-lang. Like you could specifically have that person's like, part. Like that Tech Talk Today story that we talked about? Where she was 3D printing her hoo-hoo? Yeah. Only you would go get like, you know, like you would go get a celebrity hoo-hoo or <laughs> of, a, of a JJ or whatever you want to call it. Oh my gosh. Uh, or don't you think though? Maybe. I think so. I think, I think people would do that. Uh, it already exists. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lionhead says it already exists. Well, and Lionhead has a as a as a major head of hair, so I think he'd probably know. <laughs> I feel like he's tuned in on that. Kind. It already exists as Rikai. Rikai knows too. Oh my gosh! Anybody have a link? <laughs> um, well, I have uh, a mail sack. Oh, you do? I do. I uh, I have a mail sack uh, song for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Mail what? Sack. Okay. Why did we pay mail for? Sack. Why did we pay for that motion graphic? If you're not going to use it. Well, here's what happened is this computer got switched out to a Windows box because of Skype problems, and I don't like using Windows, so I've never loaded the graphic on this computer because I don't want to have to use it. I know. But you use it every time. Well, I didn't or plan last on two it. Times. It's just okay. blame Skype. It's actually right. technically Skype's fault. But you know what, Andrews, for you, next episode. All right. Because it is also going to be the awesome award show. Yeah. We will have it. Yeah. We will have it. Um, so wait, wait, hold on. Wait. Mail sack. No, wait. Oh, I, since you mentioned the award show, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover that real quick. <laughs> so next Sunday, September seventh, the award show. If I were to open a faux company, what faux product would I should I sell? That's what I want to know from you. Email me Angela at JupiterBroadcasting.com with a picture and a description. Use the word faux in your product. It could be an existing product or a made up product or service. Um, I've gotten some great submissions, and uh, I look forward to seeing more. And you can pretty much submit pretty much up to Sunday. So, or, I mean, not Sunday, but up to Saturday. Uh, chat room is way hip on the 3D body part things. Like, apparently, this is something <laughs> that's or. But this is what I'm talking about. You see, this is crazy. So think about. Oh that. my gosh! Next Sunday is the 31st. What's why am I? Why is time so hard? Is that for not? Me? Is not? Is that not the award it's show? It's not next week. And oh. It's the weekend after. It's real September time, 7th. Real time follow up, everybody. Right there on the faux show. So here's what happens. I have to schedule my nanny a couple weeks in advance, and I've got a bunch of stuff coming up with Dylan going to school and whatever. I am just I am just off for two weeks. Maybe if... Never mind. I'm not even going to go there. Kinda I was going to... 3D... Never mind. kind of just want to do um, the award show next week anyway. You could. It's your own <laughs> rules. <laughs> I know, but... Are yeah. the submissions dropping off? Are they slowing Oh, yeah. Down? I haven't had a new submission so then let's for just like do a it. week. Let's just do it. Yeah. All right. You have uh, seven days, six days it's to like, get your submission in. Who's going to get you in trouble? <laughs> well, I don't know. I just, you know, I've been announcing it as September yeah. 7th, but. Oh, uh, let's do it. It's, All right. It's going to be an awesome one. Let me change this to All right. uh, August 31st. Plus, then we're, uh, then we're saying goodbye to August with a bang, and then we can do the other show we were talking about the next week, which will be perfect based on our family timing thing. Remember the show we were talking about doing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So that all actually work out great. Okay. All right. So now, mail sack, mail sack, mail sack. All right. There's your mail sack. I, I don't want to be any part of that. <laughs> all right. Mark writes, I am emailing you as I know I have a better chance of being of it of this being read than if I had sent this to Chris. I can't tell you how many emails I get that say that. It's People are great. figuring it out. People okay. are figuring it out. Yep. So. Uh, Mark says, I live in the UK and I watch most of your shows. I recently started using um, the Pocket Cast Android (laughs) app, as recommended by Chris on a previous episode of The Foe, to consume the audio... (laughs) (laughs) 
to consume the audio only shows from Jupiter Broadcasting. I've noticed something strange which only seems to affect the Linux Unplugged show. Uh oh. For some reason, each week, the first eight to nine minutes of the show played through this app is actually the last nine minutes of the show. After this eight to nine minutes period, the beginning of the show is played and the rest of the show plays normally. I thought at first this may be one uh, a one off, but no, every week Linux Unplugged has this problem <laughs> on uh, the Pocket Cast app. I wonder if this was something Chris could check out. Keep up the good work. Uh, tell Chris Popey rules being a fellow Brit. So, so uh, I already responded to oh, him and okay. let him know that 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 Linux Unplugged is a lug. unplugged show. It's a lug. It's yeah. a Linux user group. And uh, that that is not the last nine minutes of the show. It's the first nine minutes of Pre-show, the show. Pre-show, you, you get we're, we're take, we've taken uh, some of the bits from our live stream, not all of them, mm-hmm. and uh, we've added them to unplugged in the beginning and the end. So mm-hmm. you have a little more unplugged, and it is legitimately more unplugged. Plus, sometimes some of the best stuff happens when people think thinks the mics are off and we're allowed to say whatever we want. Yep. Uh, I did find Ange the uh, Justin Bieber vibrator that you can print on demand. What? Right there. There it is. So. It's- that's, what? That's the thing. That doesn't look anything Essentially, like... Essentially, you just print Justin Bieber's head and then shove a vibrator in it. <laughs> that's, that's, what I, that's really weird. I know. That is really weird. Perhaps you'd be more... Uh, no. All right. Uh, Peter writes... Okay. What's Peter right? Sorry. <laughs> what would you call a person who is called a Linux power user who maintains personal computers who feels there's a way to make money teaching this art? He's looking for a job and he doesn't know what to call himself. What would you call yourself? Mm-hmm. I guess just a Linux professional. Read the read the uh, part where he says what he does again. Linux power user who maintains personal computers who feels there's a way to make money teaching this art. Ah. So mm. I was thinking a Linux architect. Yeah, or uh, let's see, you gotta yeah, or uh, being evangelist is boy, you gotta be careful where you use the word evangelist. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I like- unemployed. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go with either uh, Linux. You could just go generic Linux professional. Uh, a Linux entrepreneur is always good because hmm. entrepreneur means absolutely nothing. So might as well throw that in there, <laughs> uh, right? I mean, could just, I mean okay. anybody can call themselves an entrepreneur uh, or a Linux architect or a Linux engineer, a Linux solutions developer. Oh, I like a solutions developer. <laughs> nice. Mm. Mm. Yes. Andrews, what if somebody a wanted Linux to get solution implementer? Maybe. Oh, I like that too. What if I was like watching the faux show right now and I wanted to get an email into the faux show? Well, I'm not done reading the mail sack. But you could still tell them. <laughs> All right. You can go to jupiterbroadcasting.com and go to the contact form and drop down faux show. Amazing. Or any other show. And then I would have an email email read like our next emailer? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, Dog Woof <laughs> writes, I don't think you should make any decisions regarding Tech Talk Today's uh, wow. frequency wow. of, of show until uh, wow. after college has been in session for a few weeks. There's a huge audience, uh, you know, this is a huge audience who will have solid internet connections, technical savvy and interest, but may not have the means or time to join in. Perhaps you could even cater to that dem- demographic. Hmm. So okay. it's a good consideration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing really. Don't, nobody, uh, people are getting, making a big, nah, we're just, don't, nothing. 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 I'm not going to make any changes yet. I'll let you know. Just listen to the show. No mm-hmm. big D's. No mm-hmm. big D's. No big, big D's. Um, <laughs> Eric said that I just described. His mom said that I just described him. The Linux, uh, what was it? The Linux uh, implementation specialist or what was it? Uh, Can't remember now. Or unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very good. So does that bring us to the end of this week's episode it, of The Foe? It does. Award show next week. <laughs> yeah, as, as we've just discovered. <laughs> yeah. On our own. So yeah. you do have a couple of more days for your Foe business, Angela com. Description, picture, and your IRC handle or Twitter ID or just whatever you want us to call us. Yep. Let that it. That is it for this episode of The Foe Show. We will see you next week. Did you enjoy this photo show? Well, guess what? You can catch more at jupiterbroadcasting.com and subscribe to the weekly RSS feed. It's not a W square. It what? was a 3D. <laughs> That's just a false belief. No. I am partial hippie, guys. <laughs> what? That's a funny thing to say. I'm partial hippie. Yeah. She's hippie in the good places and not hippie in the bad places, if you know what I mean. Wow.